In 1932, the University of Ibadan was the first university to be established in Nigeria and was known as the best in medicines such that there was exchange programs between students from the UK to come study from this prestigious university in Oyo State. That was how much of a high standard it had and also churned out the best of medical practitioners at the time. However, as time progressed, the table turned, such that Nigerians now run abroad in order to access the best healthcare services for those who can afford it, whereas the poor are left to bear the brunt of a system that has become quite deplorable. The Nigerian health sector was prided as the best in the early 70s, where Nigerian health sector could be compared with its foreign counterparts in terms of efficiency and efficacy. But can we boast of the same today? We speak to Dr. Chima Onoka, who also doubles as a professor of community medicines on this. Our best days, really, I mean, like people say, was in the 70s. Um, and then there were a few things that happened in the early 80s. Um, but um, I'm sure you may be aware that by 2000, by the year 2000, when a lot of people actually thought that things would be very different. Everybody looked forward to the year 2000. Um, but that's when Nigeria came um, fought from behind um, in the WHO assessment. So we were at the fourth worst. While the ordinary Nigerian continued to struggle with the reality of a system that has been strained with inefficiency, the elite continued to travel abroad for medical care. Most recently, Nigeria's first lady, Aisha Buhari, decried Nigeria's healthcare system and called for a revamp. And then came COVID-19 that further exposed the poor state of our healthcare for warning Nigerians that health emergencies are such that we can't handle. In a situation where even an Asoro clinic cannot afford ordinary ventilator, in spite of billions of money being voted, 11 point something billion, that be voted in three, in, five, in three good years. Yet the chief of staff could not be treated in that same hospital. That tells a lot about how we have actually neglected the health sector. Nigeria's polling agency, NOI, in partnership with Nigerian Health Watch, found that most doctors seek work abroad. According to some estimates, about 2,000 doctors have left Nigeria over the past few years. In my own experience, I've seen that it's way more organized here than it is back home. And we have quite a few challenges back home that will need to be surmounted before we make progress in the health sector. A doctor or anyone in the health sector, anyone at all is having to grapple between focusing on their job and having to sort out life problems, power, transport, the children's school fees or education. So these challenges make it a little bit difficult for these staff members or these individuals to put in their best in their job. While the annual health care threshold per person in the U.S. is $10,000, in Nigeria it is just $6. We go to the streets to talk to the people to hear their thoughts on the health sector. The general hospitals we have, if you did them back, you see that some of the general hospitals have been there since the 70s, all right? Some of them have been there since the 80s. Now, how, the population keeps increasing without actually increasing these facilities. So it's an equation that, can, that, that is not balanced. The federal government, on their own part, should ensure that the health workers the conditions of the health workers are well taken care of so that they will, they will be able to take care of the patients under their care. I think the health sector in this country need a facelift. The facilities are not there, drugs are not available even where you have the facilities, and the poor people are worse for it. So you end up having 
you know, death caused by lack of care. And can we return to former glory and remedy this current reality regarding the healthcare sector? We must make a definite commitment to move towards universal health coverage. And at least, you know, even if we don't hit the target, we can make good progress. Well, for 2020, the health sector received a capital spending allocation of 46 billion naira, 4.15 billion naira less than the capital expenditure allocation for health in 2019, which was 50.15 billion naira. With all that is going on for us, one would wonder why shouldn't more attention be paid to health sector moving forward. For Plus TV Africa, Amaka Ukui. Thank you very much, Amaka, for that report. Um, I mean, she, she talked about us going to back to the glory stage, uh, stage, but what comes to my mind is, should we? Because from one of the respondents uh, in that report, um, the same general hospitals we had in the 70s yes. are the same one we have now. I think I said then we were like 52 or 53 million, and now we are 200 million. million. And, um, and somebody's also talking about universal uh, health uh, that's insurance. That's the one that actually caught my attention. Yes, it, it, when the infrastructure is down and we don't have the facility or the manpower, how effective will this be, uh, really? But we, we, I mean, I feel, I feel a lot of these things, the decline started at about the same time. You know, immediately we started to focus more on... Immediately, we you know really just allowed corruption you know to you know get deep into uh, the system. We started to spend less on education and healthcare and security, and you know decline just started from there. And it has been that way since. We've not built more. We've not you know equipped more. We've not employed more. We've we've you know really done not much you know uh, more. Um, but we, of course, we're having people join us to quickly Certainly. share their thoughts uh, on these uh, conversations. Uh, Professor Chima Onoka is a medical practitioner, and uh, Dr. Emmanuel Ongali. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Chima, you are uh, well, you are one of those, um, of course, in that report. I want to bring you in uh, with one of the things that you mentioned. Uh, which is universal um, health, uh, of course, um, referring, I believe, to health insurance and a, some sort of coverage, you know, for Nigerians. Um, how possible um, is that in, in the Nigeria that we have today? Uh, thank you, Osaroge. Um, it's, um, it's an aspiration, and it's not just for Nigeria, but it's a global aspiration, and... Um, Obviously, you know, many countries have been working towards it. Um, we have gaps, huge gaps. We are very far from it. Based on our current indices, um, we are not likely to be near that by 2030, which is a global goal. Um, but we can do something towards it. And, it, you know, it's not insurance, um, basically, even though insurance can be part of it that provides some cover for some people. But it's a fact that everybody has, you know, access to healthcare, comprehensive and with quality, um, and then with some, you know, with financial risk protection. I mean, health is likely to tip people into poverty, but it shouldn't be the case. But we are far from it. Um, that's the truth. All that we see, including all the things that are in this report, show clearly that we are far from it. We, we don't have up to, you know, 5% um, of Nigerians. Probably if you throw everything together, it may be about 5% or, you know, those who have this kind of, um, um, you know, who are covered, as you would um, put it in the regular definitions. So the journey is long. Some countries, it took 50 years, some more, some less, but they were making progress. And from the report, we need to do something very definite if we are really going to make progress. Um, so we are very far, very, very far from it. Uh, Mr. Ogali, uh, let me come to you. Uh, <laughs> we're far from universal health uh, um, coverage, that is for sure. But again, um, one of the major concerns that have been expressed is the um, lack of adequate infrastructure uh, to actually cover the population uh, that we have. Where are we 
here, considering that we're 60 years old, sev um, 70s general hospitals are still what we're operating today, if you were to believe uh, the respondent um, in that report. Where are we and where should we be looking at going with the health sector? Well, thank you so much. Um, first of all, I'd like to wish every Nigerian a happy independence celebration. Happy independence. Um, I, um, just like uh, Professor Onoka said, we are quite far away from providing health care to our citizens, which is quite unfortunate. Infrastructure-wise and policy-wise, um, we are not establishing more healthcare facilities to take care of our citizens. It is not, we don't have problems with manpower. Nigeria has a lot of uh, quality healthcare practitioners all over the place. Uh, what, we, what we lack is uh, political will and policies to set up a uh, means of uh, taking care of our citizens. Uh, someone pointed out in the report that we have the same hospital since the 60s. That is true. We have private healthcare uh, providers, uh, private hospitals, but unfortunately, the quality of care being provided in these uh, hospitals cannot be comparable to, um, it cannot be measured up. I mean, you can't, um, we're not having that quality care provided in these hospitals. And I'm sorry to say that regulation is also a problem. I've had personal experiences as well. So in terms of infrastructures, we're quite far from meeting the needs of our citizens. Um, by this uh, independent celebration, it's just uh, a means of appealing to our leaders to look into quality healthcare provision for our citizens. We need more hospitals. We need more um, in, uh, oversight regulations on the private hospitals. We need to make sure that they are providing the care that is uh, standard. Uh, we've had cases where people lost their life just by going to these private hospitals. These are regular, you know, procedures that shouldn't, uh, you know, that, that every qualified healthcare practitioner should be able to provide. But because there is no regulations, uh, people end up uh, suffering a lot of complications by going to these uh, private hospitals. And there are not enough um, uh, government uh, hospitals available for people to attend. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's a problem that needs to be tackled right away. All right, I'm, I'm gonna go back to uh, Dr. Chima Onoka. Um, um, I, I wanna get your views on where you think the decline really started for us um, with regards healthcare. Um, at what point would you say in our journey in the last 60 years that we stopped caring so much about healthcare uh, for Nigerians, uh, that we stopped investing enough, you know, with, of course, the Nigerian population expanding um, um, to where we are today. At what point did, did this all start to go wrong? Um, thank you. We, you know, if you look at what we had, um, late 70s, early 80s, there were places that we had real facilities. You know, if, if you think about, you know, things like um, humanization coverage, there were times that we got to 80% before everything started going down. There were facilities that were, I've, I've worked even in a rural area, and in that place, I saw equipment that, I was amazed that I saw them in that hospital, but, but they were purchased at that time, you know, like the 80s, early 80s. But the structural adjustment program was not only about the economic aspects and, um, you know, the things that were opened up, you know, so that we could get a lot of things from outside the country and all that adjustment. It badly impacted on healthcare in Nigeria. Even the efforts, and lots of people have worked hard in this country, really, to try to reposition things. Even in healthcare, primary healthcare was, you know, a lot of effort was put in there. Um, things around, even for the general hospitals that we see today, and the bigger ones, and bringing private sector into it. But that step of giving up and handing over things that were statutorily 
you know, you can't really, you can't really quantify healthcare in terms of how much it brings in terms of productivity, because it is difficult to quantify it, or you know, its impact, what it brings to the economy, is spread out. It's spread out because you know, just like we are sitting and you are there, it's difficult to tie your productivity clearly to the fact that your health is protected. And so when people even try to make economic arguments about it, it, it doesn't come out very strongly. Um, but the fact is that all that was done to open up the economy, bring up this, allow things from outside, it badly impacted healthcare because government took its hands out of healthcare. It's never really recovered. And um, for, you to, for us to take it back, I think we need to overhaul the system completely. Because even those of us who are inside it, a lot of people feel that it's not just, you know, you know, there's really nothing to put in. But government is training a lot, and there are lots of hardworking people, like I said. It needs an overhaul. We need to step back and say, look, what we're doing isn't working. Let's rethink. Let's reinvent. Let's refocus. Let's All reform right. what we need to reform. Let's close what shouldn't be open. And then let's turn around our medical nursing education looks and then make them have a vision. More than half of those who finish from medical schools today are just preparing to write an exam to go out. Is government losing its investment? You've medical raised quite a number of issues, is Dr. Subsidized in the country, but it can be different. But You've raised quite a number of a issues. Um, let, let's and, let's see um, if we can you know, um, go towards a you. solution. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see if we can go towards a solution. You've raised quite a number of issues. We'll, if we have time, we'll get to them. But let's start with one that is in our face right now, and that has to do with the strike, the insistent strike from the health sector. Um, I'll go to Mr. Ogali, I beg your pardon, with this uh, question. Insistent strike. Is it possible that to begin the process of revamping the health sector, we could start with improving on the welfare of those who man that sector by addressing this, the, the issues that necessitate the strikes that we continue to see. Can we start from there? Is that a way to go, Dr. Ogali? Thank you so much. Yes, I totally agree with you. Um, healthcare practitioners going on strike is something that is commonly seen in Nigeria. In other well-developed nations, that is not something that is allowed. Um, I'm, I'm using that strong word, not allowed, not because people are people are free. People are still free to express their anger and their uh, 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 and their issues. Uh, but there are other ways of expressing that. I'm not in support of people not being. I mean, healthcare practitioners being shortchanged or not being taken care of. But um, in a place where the government is responsible, what happens is that you don't let these matters deteriorate to the point where people have to go on strike, especially healthcare practitioners. Um, when that happens, the whole society is put in, in, in a lot of uh, stress. Someone has said that health is wealth. If you want a productive population, they have to be healthy. Uh, so, uh, yes, I agree that uh, the issues that impact our health workers need to be looked into very critically. Uh, the political will has to be there. Um, it's just a matter of sitting down and looking at where to weed out um, uh, excesses. Uh, corruption has to be dealt with, and these monies can be applied to taking care of our health workers. It is not just salaries. It is working conditions. I work in Canada today, not because I had no job in Nigeria. It's just because of uh, work environment. When you train as a, a physician, you want to really have uh, equipment to work with. You really want to be happy that when you go to work, you're able to help your, uh, your patients. Uh, a situation where a patient comes and you can't help them because you don't have equipment is really frustrating. So most uh, Nigerian doctors are leave. They right. leave because the infrastructures are not there. It's not just about money. Okay, so we on, have to start Ogali. looking at how to improve the quality of remuneration for our healthcare workers. We have to put regulations in place so that the first approach to settling matters between doctors and government shouldn't be strike. 
there has to be other ways of settling this matter so that our populations do not suffer. When people need to see the doctor, they should have access to doctors. Now, I mean, uh, every six months or every year, doctors go on strike in Nigeria. That should not be so. All right, hold on, uh, Dr. Gali. I I'm going to go back to uh, Dr. Chima Onoka. Um, um, you're uh, currently, I believe, um, in Enugu. I, I met you a few times in Enugu. Um, I, I want to get your views from the pictures that Dr. Gali just painted um, with regards to the reason Nigerian doctors are leaving the country. Um, I want you to speak on the brain drain um, that this is causing our health sector um, here in Nigeria. Um, does it break your heart um, seeing fellow colleagues of yours eager to leave the country to practice elsewhere? Um, and how do you think we can fix you know, a situation you know, that would keep them here to save lives here in Nigeria? Um, thanks. And um, when you say colleagues, um, Emmanuel is my colleague and friend. And um, <laughs> in fact, we're actually trained together. And um, so we're on either, you know, we're on different sides of, of the ocean now. Um, and I've been in Abuja and then also, you know, um, so it's painful. It is difficult. Um, and um, it's, you know, I can say that it's probably going to get more difficult for those who are left here in Nigeria because the, the doctor to patient ratio it has changed, you know, and it's changing by the day. Lots of people have left since um, I keep hearing the news, you know, since um, the flight, the airports got opened up. It's painful, very painful. And the problem I have with it is that we've still not, it still hasn't hit us that this is a serious matter. And um, it's not just about the people. You can't stop anybody. And um, even though we know that there are more painful situations, you know, we're having them every day. But it's what we're going to do as a nation collectively. And that's why I say that we actually need to step back. You know, even those that brought health care did not bring it in in perfect conditions. Health care, especially from the missionaries that brought it into the country, they brought it in when there, were no, when there was no electricity, when the conditions were not very good. But there was a vision. What's the vision that we're living for those who are even going into medical school, nursing schools, pharmacy schools? What's the vision as a country that we are presenting before them? What are they seeing? Indians, the senior doctors, and far less than what junior doctors earn in Nigeria. Yet you see commitment, even though there are many Indians all over the world, you know, working. What's the vision that we leave? And then what, you know, kinds of things can we do in our educational sector to change it? Uh, Dr. Onoka, I'm told we have less than a minute. So if you could wrap up in 30, that would be nice. Okay. Thank you. So I, I think we need to make it in a way that people see that they're actually valued, um, yes. irrespective of the part of healthcare that they are training. And, but brain drain is an issue, and we need to admit it first. Leaders aren't admitting it yet. We need to admit it and take the steps that we need to take um, to fix it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Onoka and, of course, Dr. Ogali for joining us on this special edition of Nigeria's independence. Thank you. Thank and you. happy independence. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.